everyone. Right, I'm back back once again. Um, as I said on Facebook earlier tonight, I'm going to shortly in a, in a little while reiterate the metal foil demo that I carried out over the weekend on the interesting Modeling Co's Festival of Modeling, which was a a little attempt at a replacement for the Telford show, which we didn't get to have this year. So I'm going to uh, rehash that. Reason being that I can stream this and hopefully I am streaming this in um, 1080p, H full HD, which I cannot do on Facebook. Um, so the quality should be a lot better and hopefully that will enable viewers to actually see exactly what I'm doing uh, a little more easily. So that's why I'm going to redo it. But first off, I got a new book and I want to show you it. So I'll just move the Warhawk out of the way for a moment. Uh, and said new book is this. Is this hopefully, no, it's back to front. Great. Um, this is the Wing Leader Photo Archive number four. Now, anybody who's watched any of my videos will know that I am, in fact, a big fan of the Wing Leader Photo Archive series. So I have all of the previous ones, the Spitfire Hurricane and, and indeed the other 109E uh, book, which is number two. Now, these focus, in fact, on units in the Battle of Britain. Uh, they're not sort of as aircraft and detail focused as the Spitfire and the Hurricane was, but they're absolutely beautiful and worth every penny of the £20 that they're going to cost you. And I'll just grab a few samples pages i'm not going to show you the whole lot obviously but um this is the star so this this aircraft crashed it tells you about the aircraft where where it's from often who who was even flying it in the histories of the pilots and the aircraft and then they do a profile based on the photographs or sometimes of other aircraft of the same unit really really interesting stuff love this one um picture of the actual aircraft and then the profile so for people like myself who who like to work from original photos and like to try and in some way replicate the real thing I'm not saying I ever really achieve it but this is this is absolute this is wonderful because um, a lot of the photos are really good quality really big well reproduced photographs all gathered together in one place so if there's a, a 109E model sat in your stash and you think, what shall I do with that? They're all here. Well, all of the European front ones anyway. Lots of information. Lots and lots of great photographs, as you can see. And, of course, really nicely drawn profiles as well. Really love it. Love these series. And I say this is the fourth one. These are £20, 19 95 is the RRP directly from Wing Leader, which is wingleader.co.uk. Uh, that's where I've got these from uh, myself. Uh, the next one is due out soon, number five, and it's set to be on the Lancaster, the Avro Lancaster. So that'll be nice as well. Anywho, right, excuse me, back to the foiling. So, firstly, the foil I'm using. Again, covered all this at the weekend, but I shall do it again. I, I'm using Reynolds Wrap, heavy duty, made in the USA. This, I don't know if you can buy it uh, in the UK easily. I got this while I was on detachment uh, several years ago, but I would be amazed if you can't get it on eBay or Amazon if you really want it. And the reason for using this is... You can hear it's quite thick. The UK tin foil is, is probably half the thickness of this, wafer thin in comparison. It's much, much thicker, which makes it easier to manipulate into double curves and such without ripping it, uh, but also allows for the final phase of fitting it, which I shall be showing you. So what I've done with my foil is I cut some sections, I pulled a chunk off, cut it into some slightly more manageable size pieces. And I chucked it in a saucepan 
with some eggs. Yes, just ordinary egg. This uh, I did, I think five pieces about this size, had three eggs in there, boiled them for about 10 minutes. And you've got all these different colours and things going on. You don't have to do this if you don't want a burnt metal appearance, but I've I've found through testing that it does make a difference even when you sand it off. So this is my test mule, my uh, spare Edward Hellcat. And this piece here, on this side, is a piece of straight foil straight from the tube. And you can see how shiny that is. On this side, I've used some, bur some burnt foil and done exactly the same thing to it. And you can see how it's got a much more restrained finish on it, much duller uh, than that. And that's why I've boiled it, even though I don't want a burnt metal appearance. If you do want a burnt metal appearance, then this is absolutely perfect. And an example of that, and this is where I started with the whole boiling foil with eggs thing. Here's an F4 that I'm working on. That I have foiled using the burnt pieces and I think you'll agree it does look pretty awesome and, that, and this is just pure foil finish I've not done anything else to that yet um, and I don't think I'm going to need to do a lot to it frankly it looks really good pop that back in its cradle so how do we do it? Well, you have to get this onto this. So you need some kind of adhesive. Clearly this is a standard kitchen foil, so it does not have a built-in adhesive like bare metal foil does. So I've been using the micro metal foil adhesive from Microscale Industries. This is easily available from all good model shops. As well as that, you will need some IPA. Now that's isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol or I think it's also called denatured alcohol in some circles. Um, basically, this is my two litre can that I got off eBay. Uh, there was a, an absolute crisis in the availability of IPA earlier this year for obvious reasons as it's the major component of alcohol hand gel. And you couldn't get it for level money. But thankfully, that situation has eased somewhat. <laughs> Excuse the sniffles. Uh, and you now can get it. So that was off eBay. Cost about £12 for two full litres. And two litres is going to last a while. I just decamp that into this slightly more useful jar or tub or bottle. The other thing I've been using a little bit on and off is actually Mr Colour Thinners. Again... I don't have the container anymore because it's all gone. But Mr. Colour Lacquer Thinners, model Lacquer Thinners. Again, that's decanted into this small jar. And these are used for cleaning. Because you do need to clean it. For actually applying the foil, I use two tools almost exclusively. The humble cotton bud and the equally humble cocktail stick. Now, I don't think I fully explained... Uh, at the weekend, the the premise for this cocktail stick. This is a specific cocktail stick, uh, and I always use it for burnishing down bare metal foil when I do canopy masking. Uh, and it is just an ordinary ca uh, cocktail stick, but it's one of the better quality ones. Uh, I don't know about anyone else, but it's increasingly difficult, I find, to to get good quality cocktail sticks. They're tending to be like these now, which are kind of splintery and weak and not very good. This is a slightly better quality one. And on top of that, it has been sanded so that this end is very, very smooth. Uh, so it doesn't uh, catch on the foil. It rubs across it smoothly. And another top tip I didn't mention, forgot is uh, Vaseline this is Vaseline on a piece of foil I just use a little bit of that on the end of the stick every now and again just keeps it smooth and helps it just to glide across that metal and that helps to stop it from ripping and tearing and as I said initially the cotton bud 
So, preparation of the model. The glue, the glue, the glue actually, it's stated on the pack that it's best to apply the foil to bare plastic, so that's what I'm doing. Now, what I have done for the majority of the model is I've scuffed the surface somewhat with, with the blue sanding pad. It's not um, a pure, highly polished plastic surface, just just so that I feel like I can trust the glue more. So the first stage is I use the cotton bud and the IPA. And the area where I'm going to attach the foil, so let's do this side panel. Give it a good rub. And then dry it as well. So any finger oil, debris, excess glue from the other sections is removed. Then, if I just measure off the piece of foil I'm going to use, very roughly, oversized, massively in most cases, There we go. Pop that on here and use the same cotton bud with the IPA on a smooth surface. And again, just clean that piece of foil. Once you're happy that you the area to be foiled and your piece of foil are clean, then get another cotton bud. Um, I did mention at the weekend, make sure you've got a good supply of cotton buds in hand when you start to do this because you do get through them. Give the glue a shake. And then I just hold one end of the foil and gently coat that foil. With the adhesive, you can use a paintbrush. I think if you were really keen, you could probably spray the glue on. But the, the, suffice it to say that the the smoother you can get your glue, the easier it will be to finish the foil once it's attached. Put the lid back on there. So as you can see, there's nothing desperately specialist or expensive here it's all stuff that many of you should no doubt already have in your armory or your toolbox so we now wait a couple of minutes it doesn't take very long for this glue to become tacky shall I say basically we're looking for the milky milky appearance to go and once you cut like now you can't see it anymore that foil is ready to attach i don't know how long this lasts i wouldn't leave it for long personally but when it's ready to go take the model and place the foil where you want it now this is i've been using much oversized pieces just to to remove any need for massive accuracy with this once it's on and the cotton bud's squeaking because it's got IPA on it, but we just smooth it out roughly into position. And like you would with any sort of sticker, decal or anything of this nature, you start in the middle or close to it or at one end so that if you're pushing out any air bubbles or pockets of anything to the edges. Like so. And that's that with with the cotton bud then we're going to take our burnishing stick and using the side of the tip we're not going to scratch it in on the end obviously that's just that would be silly i'm going to use the side of the end of this cocktail stick just to really push this foil into position 
is at this stage that, I mean, there are no real details on this section that I'm doing here, but all your panel lines will suddenly pop out. If there are rivets and fasteners and things like that, that kind of detail, you'll suddenly see it all jump out at the point where the burnishing is getting done. And I'm also at the same time using the tip, or the edge of it anyway, just to delineate, del delineate, get my teeth in, the edges where I'm going to need to cut this foil down to size. So I'm butting up against other foil pieces, so that's quite easy for me to see here. So I've pushed that into position in both directions. It's nice and firmly rubbed down. It's good and stuck and it's looking quite smooth. Then taking your scalpel with a decently sharp but not brand new blade, just run it. Carefully, carefully along the edges where the foil needs to end. It's like anything, I'm not using a lot of effort or, or weight on, on the on the blade. It's really it will follow that panel line if you let it, like so. I'm steadying my blade with the other fingers of my hand. Obviously, if you slip, you'll put a nice scratch into the plastic that you'll then have to sand out, so it pays to be patient. Tricky little corners like that, you can just press it. You don't have to really do a cutting motion. There. And once that's cut out, take them tweezers and just peel away the excess. Some, care's some care is required um, so as not to pull up the layers that you've already put down. But I'm, just, I'm finding that once it's down, it seems like it's quite happy to stay there, you know? We go put the excess pieces straight in the bin because they're hellaciously sticky and it gets really really old really really quickly when every time you put your arm near the bench it comes away with all sorts of foil fragments stuck to it so finally going back in and all those edges where we've just detached the excess foil just rubbing them back down again because they do tend to just pop up a bit there we go that is that piece fitted so I'll do another section on the wing where it's going to be a bit easier for it to be visible uh, with the camera as you're looking at it I don't know why it seems so dark because I've got all the lights in here many many lights the camera's overcompensating for it right so yeah i'll do another piece here on on the wing but it's going to be slightly easier up, 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 that way slightly easier to see what i'm doing than it probably was there so i'll take my piece of foil choose a, a panel um, just start in this middle area. Now, when you consider that my roll of Reynolds wrap cost me, I think a couple of dollars, um, and it's fifty square meters, there's really no need to <laughs> worry about being cautious with your your foil supply. Don't like that, that's got holes in it. Another bit. So 
So make sure the piece of foil is big enough for the part you want to cover. And then back we go through the same process as before. I'll clean the I'll clean the shiny side and I'm for most of this model I've been gluing it the foil down shiny side down. But as you shall see, that isn't terribly important because of what I'm going to do to it in a minute. So that's the area I'm going to cover. Like that. I'll get my glue bud. I've been finding the cotton buds are good for two, two, three applications and then I have to switch to the other end because once the glue starts to dry on the end of the cotton bud it it's leaving bits in, in the, the new layer of glue which is not, obviously not preferable so you get two or three applications out of each end and then they go in the bin so again we'll let that you can just see that milky appearance on the reflection there we're waiting for that to just air off what a day today had a course on this afternoon, didn't get finished till late, and then I had to go and fetch my car from the garage. It's uh, The delayed MOT was due, but worse than that, it needed a service and a cam belt as well, so that's been a bit of a financial blow this afternoon, I'm not going to lie. It's got to be done though, hasn't it? It's not quite there yet. <clears throat> Anyone that's been watching this over the weekend can probably appreciate this isn't the fastest process in the world. I'm, I've now got one wing and both sides of the fuselage done. I am getting there. It does take a while, but I quite enjoy it. It's quite it's quite calming work. I can have the have the uh, have a film on on the old lap, on the old iPad there. There we go. That's ready to go. Yeah, have a film playing away in the background and just quietly. Partly podge bits of foil on the model. It's it's quite I'm quite enjoying it. I think uh, the results on, on this occasion are possibly less than stellar, but it's all a uh, it's all a learning curve. I've never done this before on a full model. In fact, in a minute I'll show you the first piece I did a few months back when I developed all these ideas. So. I find that by rubbing uh, across panel lines, it tends to pop them out more easily than if you try and run along them, which is slightly counterintuitive. You would think it'd be the other way around. But So again, I'm polishing this down. Burnishing, I believe, is the correct term. With this shiny, well-used, very smooth cocktail stick. I do put quite a lot of pressure on it. Not so much to make the model creak and groan, but I do put quite a lot of pressure on it to really press that foil down and, and in fact, smooth the glue layer out underneath it as far as possible. So I can see, I can now see these panel lines vaguely through the foil. So I'm sticking the end of the cocktail stick in just to make them really obvious. There you go, very visible. And then I'll get my knife, as before. The reason I don't like to use too sharp of a blade is I find that new blades or very, very sharp blades tend to, they almost seem to drag in the foil, which the slightly more blunt blade doesn't. I don't know what the scientific reason for that is. But I don't want to drag the foil, I want to cut it. So I'm just carefully finding that panel line. And really, there isn't any good reason why, if you really wanted to, you couldn't cover this entire wing in one piece. Not really any good reason not to. I quite like doing it panel by panel. It's fun. I 
Okay. That should be cut. Let's see. Yes. And this does show actually how well the glue does stick. It is a fairly decent bond. Okay, just pulled that up a bit, but I'll squish it back down. And there's our piece of foil, nicely in situ, all rubbed down, trimmed, and ready for the next step because, you know, I don't really want a super brown dingy old bit of foil on that wing root do I? I want a nice smooth and clean piece like I've got this side so the way I go about getting it that way is by sanding it down so I have a piece here of P800 wet and dry it's quite well worn uh, word to the wise so it's probably more effective more like a P1000 and I'll start to just gently, using water, sand the piece of foil. Now, I'm straight away going to wipe that off because I want to show you what isn't really obvious until you start sanding it. It's just how much texture there is in that piece of foil. Do you see that that's basically the texture of the glue that's been applied to the other side of the foil and I need to get rid of that and there's enough thickness in this Reynolds wrap foil that I can as long as I'm careful sand it down enough to get rid of it now obviously you could foil the whole thing and then sand the whole thing you could foil it panel by panel and sand each panel. It doesn't make any odds. I've been sanding it in areas as I've gone along because, um, quite frankly, it's quite a lot of work. And if you waited till the end and did it all in one go, I think it would be beyond tedious, honestly. Um, it doesn't sand as easily as plastic does. especially using these very fine pieces of uh, abrasive so but you don't want it to and the bonus, of, the bonus of doing it piece by piece or in smaller sections is if you do sand through it you can just peel it off and replace it there and then it doesn't need to be a massive issue i'm not averse to leaving some evidence of that texture because Real aeroplanes, even sporty ones, are not actually completely smooth, even when they're brand new, and especially once they've been flying a bit and they've been moving around a bit. So a, li a little bit of evidence of texture is not a bad thing. And in the case of this model, it's a well-worn, late war aircraft being used in the Pacific theatre so yes okay let me just clean that with IPA to get rid of that excess glue which you can see is black dots around the edge here it's almost like a sort of the cross between a contact adhesive and PVA and when you try it when it gets under the sandpaper it just rolls makes a right mess there you have it that's the panel all nice and smooth down using 800 grit wet and dry and you can see it's not got a mirror finish on it it's quite a nice satin sort of scrubbed finish now obviously like with anything else when you've sanded it 
you can go up through different different grades of abrasives. So here I've got a piece of Trizact, which is a 3000 grit sponge back pad. I can nip across it with that. And that will just knock back the more obvious scratches. But the flip side is it gives you a much smoother finish and you very, very quickly start to head towards a highly polished warbird look, which is not what I want. But I think that's pretty pretty decent starting point for uh, weathering, etc. So from there... When it comes to weathering, you can weather this in exactly the same way as you would weather any finish on a model. Um, you can just add, you can add washes, filters, mat coats, whatever you want, just the same as you would normally. But I want to retain the the the, the patina of actual metal. That's why I've gone to the trouble of, of doing it this way. So I, I don't want to lose that by putting flat coat and things like that on. So what I found was through a combination of photo etch burnishing liquid and believe it or not, a decal fix. When this is brushed onto the surface, it, it seems to just uh, accelerate the oxidation process. You can't see it in action, but you just brush it on like that and leave it. A few minutes or like you know rub it in with your finger and when you do this you can see black coming off so you know it's doing some work and it, it just dulls down the finish and the other factor is uh, for instance if I turn you over to the bottom where this is sanded a day after this and just the handling being in my hands and touched constantly is really it's starting to wear this and it's really looking nice on top of that uh, another where is it there it is another thing we can do is use wash so a particular uh, personality trait of enamel washes that i've found is they have a very slightly gritty feel to them there's very very slightly um there's little particles in there and they tend to dry quite matte so i found it works quite nicely you can actually hear i hope how that has got a sort of a gritty sound to it I pop that on and leave it for a moment just to dry off a touch. And whilst that's drying off for a minute or two, I'll get the other model. Here's one I did earlier. It's not been seen around the place yet because it's due for publication. But I'll just do a quick sneaky peeky for you. This is a Fock Wolf 190D. And the late war ones tended to have unpainted aluminium undersides and that's where I first tried out this technique on any scale as in any large area of work uh, and I I thought it came out fantastically well I absolutely love how authentic that really looks some might say it's too shiny but metal actually is shiny so you know <laughs> but you can see there how the addition of some filters and some oversprays and primer effects and what have you have dulled it down significantly but it's still got that metal look to it really really like it one note of caution i talked there about handling and how the uh oils and things from from your fingers will start to wear the surface and weather it down they will but it does have a tendency this foil to want to um all the little corners want to pull up all the time so do be careful i found myself having to do little little spot repairs quite frequently of corners that have lifted just because i want that to dry it's going to take all day isn't it but rather than wiping it all the way off, like you might be more used to the idea of, say, wiping it off like that or 
or using a cotton bud or whatever, if you just be patient, do a small area at a time because it takes a while, use brushes that you're not bothered about and effectively kind of rub it in, blend it in, however you want to look at it. Keep going and the wash will gradually sort of start to, it almost seems like it's disappearing. But you're just blending it out. And this is why I say you don't need to be bothered about your brush because I'm sorry, I'm kind of scrubbing it now. There you go. Again, it's just dulled it down a little bit. It's made it look a little bit dirty. And uh, and yet another bonus, I think, with it with the enamel washes, or if you wanted to use oils to do this, is if you put it on and think, oh, do you know what? I shouldn't have used that colour. I don't like it. it. Doesn't look good. Just grab a little bit of enamel thinners or turpentine type gear and wash it off. Good as new. Finally then, I you know I think this is this has been both easier and more difficult than I ever imagined it would be. It uh, it does reward patience for sure. Um, but I think personally that the results are well worth it I, I just think it looks fabulous even without any markings on it and i i can't wait to see it with the markings painted on how it's going to look and start adding a bit of rough and tumble to it i think it's going to look amazing but there are areas on this model that i couldn't foil they were too curved in this scale too much double curve for me to be able to get the foil to work uh, i did manage to do the the entirety of the cowl that is all foil uh, and I did manage that 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 went that went down it wasn't easy actually but it did do it and all of the wing root apart from this very front moved that way this very front section please excuse filthy fingers but black uh, black um, aluminium residue and these forward pieces of the little blisters where the undercarriage lives I couldn't I couldn't get the foil to work in those areas. The, it, I think there's some possibility that the, the these might have got somewhere near, but the adhesive actually isn't strong enough to allow the, the foil to stretch that much as you come around the front. So what I have used is just is is metallic paint. So this wing root has been rubbed down again, but that is actually paint. And it does match reasonably well. In such a small area, you can get away with it. It's not super obvious. And the paint I've used for that in this case is AK's Extreme Metal Aluminium. And if anyone hasn't tried this stuff, I think it's I think it's advertised as being an enamel. Um, yeah, enamel-based paint for airbrush. But it's absolutely lovely stuff. It's it's so easy to use it's durable it's, it's just really good stuff so i fully recommend that anyway but i've used aluminium here and it's blended itself in quite nicely thank you so so yeah i think i think i pretty much covered everything um that i thought i was gonna say there's probably going to come a point when i'm going to realize i haven't but <laughs> in the meantime, uh, if anybody has any questions, issues, queries, observations on anything, as ever, give me a shout through my Facebook page uh, and, and I will always come back to you. So just remains for me to uh, wish you all well and I hope everybody is staying well. Um, look after yourselves and I will see you the next time I broadcast. So that's it for now. Genesis out.